Good morning. Uh, thank you, Dan and Mike, for giving the opportunity here. And uh, I'm glad to talk about one of my favorite topics, uh, polyp resection. Um, there's a lot of people who will miss uh, our session here. That's unfortunate because it's really exciting in a way. And if you're doing colonoscopy, uh, this is what you're busy with uh, most of the time. So <clears throat> I'd like to start with the take home points. And the reason being that standard pulpectomy ha has been changing over the past few years. And uh, I'd like to focus your attention on those three things. And I hope you take those uh, important points home today. Number one, do not use the forceps to remove any polyp. Number two, use a cold snare for most polyps. And number three, apply the right cold snare technique. So my task is to talk about standard, um, the right standard pullbackectomy techniques. So in order to do so, uh, I will review the tools and techniques of standard pullbackectomy, review what evidence uh, supports their use, uh, and hopefully I will be able to give you some practical guidance. <clears throat> so when we talk about standard pullbackectomy, we talk about the removal of a polyp with one simple tool that not, does not require any ancillary or adjunctive means. Um, so that typically applies for those polyps that are easy to remove, mostly diminutive or small polyps. And if you look at the distribution of polyps that you encounter during colonoscopy, uh, that applies to almost all polyps because diminutive polyps up to five millimeter can be removed with one tool, small polyps, six to nine millimeters, and even some of the large polyps do not require any ancillary adjunctive means as EMR or even ESD. So it's really um, the majority of polyps can be removed by standard pulpectomy technique. So why do we care? Apart from that is really one of the most common uh, polyp resections we perform. Uh, first of all, incomplete resection is actually pretty common. So we're not as good as we think we are taking off those polyps. Adenomas um, that are up to five millimeter in size are incompletely removed um, in those studies uh, up to 30% of the time. And medium to large size adenomas are incompletely removed 10% of the time. And the second point is that incomplete resection matters. Patients may develop colorectal cancer after a colonoscopy, so-called interval cancers or post-colonoscopy cancers. And although we believe that the majority of those cancers are related to mislesions, up to 30% may be related to an incompletely removed polyp. <clears throat> so if we agree that polyp resection is important and needs to be complete, how do we go uh, about it? And um, um, the principles of polyp resections apply. And uh, you can, um, um, there are five different principles or steps of polyp resection. First, you have to assess the lesion primarily to see what the size is and the extent of the lesion, also to describe morphology. Um, but the most important thing is to understand whether this is really something that's approachable with endoscopic resection, that you don't miss any cancer in there that's maybe more invasive and requires surgical resection. So the second um, situation is position. It's the position of the colonoscope towards the lesion or vice versa. And um, I tell my fellows, position is the most important aspect uh, during any endoscopic intervention, and uh, that is true for polyp resection and for others. And then the, uh, the resection itself of the lesion, then the inspection of the margin to make sure you really achieved a complete resection, and if something is left behind, you have to remove that too. And finally, retrieval of the specimen. <clears throat> so what tools do we use? Um, we should attempt to mechanically remove a lesion. The reason is that ablation or coagulation of neoplastic tissue is not sufficient and the risk of recurrence is high. So we have, in general, we have available the forceps and the snare. The forceps and the snare can be used with electrocautery or without electrocautery, we call it cold or hot forceps versus cold or hot snare. So also use the tools to estimate polyp size and actually to help to identify morphology. So I use um, uh, typically the diameter of the snare, which um, if you look at the package, it comes uh, at the package description, uh, let's say 10 millimeter of the uh, Olympus snare in the middle, uh, you can uh, 
uh, put this over the polyp and you have a better understanding of uh, the polyp size rather than to guess what the polyp size is from a distance. Uh, I also use the tip of the catheter of the snare, which is 2.4 millimeters for the snares that we use for different brands. And that um, actually is also helpful for estimating uh, the height of the polyp um, and to categorize into the Paris classification of morphology. Um, a 2.5 millimeter height of a polyp um, separates the protuberant polyps, which would be uh, Paris type one from the flat polyps, Paris type two. So if you are engaging into more advanced uh, polyp sections, you should know about uh, the Paris morphology and also the pit pattern classification um, because that gives you clues to understand whether there's any invasive cancer or not. So what are we using in clinical practice? That's an, an older survey, but it's still, um, it has been reproduced recently and wasn't much different. Um, for small polyps, a forceps is low, used most of the time. And for larger polyps here, 80% of 79 millimeter have been removed by hot snare. What's also interesting is that the cold snare uh, is used only for the minority of the polyps. And that survey done in the US um, more than 10 years ago is actually representative also of what's being done in other countries, um, perhaps uh, more snare used in the UK and more forceps used in Austria. Um, so let's go through those uh, four tools that we have available or the four approaches that we have available and look first at hot biopsy forceps. Um, the, the idea about hot biopsy is that you coagulate neoplastic tissue while taking the polyp with a, with a bite. Um, however, that uh, has turned out not to be um, uh, effective. 15% uh, of polyps removed with hot biopsy forceps are incompletely removed. Um, in addition, hot uh, biopsy forceps leads to a specimen that is difficult to interpret by our pathologists. And also, as you know, it probably it increased the risk of uh, deep tissue injury with a higher risk of a deep moral burn syndrome or even perforation. On the right-hand side, on the bottom, you see that the cautery artifact really goes deep into the muscularis uh, down here, maybe even into the serosa uh, as compared to the uh, hot snare resection, the muscularis propria is really not affected by the cautery. So let's look at cold forceps resection. Here's a very tiny polyp, probably about up, oh, how do I go back? So here's a small polyp in the ascending colon uh, and being approached with the forceps. And just look at the upper portion of that polyp. So the, the bite, the cup of the forceps, 2.1 millimeters. So if you have just a little larger, probably something is left here. But now with the water jet, you clean up the blood a little bit and the margin elevates. And now you don't even know anymore where the uh, remaining polyp is. Uh, moreover, it becomes even more difficult to really aim with the uh, forceps to remove the tiny little bit of polyp tissue that's left. So it's really better to have the entire polyp removed at the, uh, in the beginning rather than to um, uh, deal with those little um, pieces of tissue that are left behind. And in fact, cold forceps studies have shown that about a quarter of diminutive polyps are incompletely removed with the forceps. So one in four diminutive polyps, if you use the forceps, are not completely is not completely removed. So how can we do better? Well, this uh, interesting study by Peter Dragonath uh, used a jumbo forceps, just using a bigger cup, which is, um, which is two point, almost three millimeter in size um, up here, um, and then take the bites until the polyp is completely gone. But interestingly, you still need 2.5 bites with the regular forceps and almost as many bites with the jumbo forceps to visibly completely remove a polyp. But even if you do so, the um, the risk of incomplete resection on the right for a large capacity uh, for, for, the, for the regular uh, biopsy for jumbo forceps are still 20%. So still one in five polyps is incomplete removed no matter whether you take a uh, jumbo forceps or not. <clears throat> so size matters though. So if you have very tiny diminutive polyps up to three millimeter, the forceps might be okay in this study one to three millimeter polyps 
were all completely removed, well, if they got larger, the incomplete resection rate was larger, it was, was greater. So you may use the cold forceps, but only for very small uh, diminutive polyps. So here, um, you, we're switching now to cold snare polypectomy. I'd like to put your attention to the tip of the catheter. Again, 2.4 millimeters, you can estimate the size, just a little larger than the tip, so about three millimeter polyps, but the tip of the catheter is being anchored at the base of the polyp, about one millimeter away from the polyp base, and that assures a small, healthy margin around the polyp. So the technique is a gentle push and close technique. So you don't lift it off. Again, you have, you deploy the snare, you anchor the tip of the, uh, at the base, one millimeter away, you close, you have a small healthy margin. The polyps stay nicely there. And here's another one. So again, tip of the uh, catheter placed at the base, about a millimeter away from the, from the base so that you get a small healthy margin. You suction a little bit air off and then you close. And so that way you can ensure that you have a small healthy margin around the polyp. Now those are pretty small polyps and then you can suction easily away. I usually use a capsule that helps me also to trap those um, polyps into the working channel. So <clears throat> um, this is a study that was just published in endoscopy this month looking at adenomas up to <clears throat> nine millimeters in size. And you can see that the overall incomplete resection rate on the left bar is only 4%, so it's pretty good. Um, and that there's an increasing risk of incomplete resection by size. So six to nine millimeter polyps, 6%, um, one to five, just 3%. Now maybe we just switch to a hot snare and get rid of those um, three or 6%. So, here is um, a hot snare resection. So same principle, you place the tip of the catheter at the base, about a millimeter or two away, and then you close the snare by keeping gentle pressure on. And once the snare is closed, you lift it off from uh, the wall, and then you apply cautery and close um, the snare. Uh, you have to tent away from there just to assure that you have a um, uh, you don't cause any cautery injury. And those are nice cautery section margins, and you might think, well, those margins are actually, they probably get rid of all the remaining polyp tissue at the margin. Um, also, you should always look at the margins to make sure the, 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 the polyp is completely removed. But um, the cautery does not take care of incomplete resection. This is, these are the results of our study that we published a couple of years ago, looking at uh, five to 20 millimeter adenomas. Uh, the overall incomplete resection rate was 10%, so one in 10 polyps incomplete are removed. Um, and if you look at the, you see that there is an increase in the incomplete resection rate <coughs> with um, increasing size of the polyp. And if you look at the polyps five to nine millimeter, the two left bars, the incomplete resection rates between six and 9%. So very similar to um, the incomplete resection rate with the cold snare supporting or suggesting that hot snare cautery really doesn't help much with uh, removing remaining polyp tissue. So there have been only few comparative studies uh, cold, comparing hot snare with a uh, cold snare, this is a very interesting one, a small study from Japan looking at patients on anticoagulation and Coumadin. So Coumadin wasn't stopped. Patients had up to 10 millimeter polyp or at least had to have one 10 millimeter polyp. And the risk of delayed bleeding in the cold snare group, delayed bleeding, uh, was zero. So no patient in the cold snare group had any post polypectomy bleeding. However, in the hot snare group, 14% had a delayed bleeding event. Now. Um, we usually say, well, hot snare, at least it takes care of the immediate bleeding risk, but uh, to the contrary, in this study, the hot snare group also had an increased risk of immediate bleeding, 23% uh, as compared to 6% in the cold snare group. Now, this study, um, the limitation, the major limitation is here that uh, the, the bleeding risk or the bleeding wasn't really clearly defined, so it's unclear what constituted a bleeding. Uh, and also, it's very small and has to be reproduce before it can be generalized. Nevertheless, cold snare resection has been increasingly applied to larger polyps. Here you can see the studies published over the past few years, uh, up to eight millimeter, 10 millimeter, 20 millimeter, nine millimeter size. The actually case here is uh, using cold snare for EMRs for much larger polyps. 
But I'd like to draw attention to the immediate bleeding and the delayed bleeding uh, group. You can see in the immediate bleeding group, the risk is pretty low, non, non two, six, one, and 2%, and those are the percentages of um, polyps that required a clip uh, closure. So it's not surgery or any major drastic intervention that need to be taken care of for the immediate bleeding. And uh, even more importantly, there were no description of any delayed bleeding event using a cold snare. So uh, the cold snare appears to be as efficient and at least as safe as hot snare resection. And therefore, it doesn't really surprise that the new guidelines that came out just this month from Europe, from the ESGE, the ball polyp resection, now recommend the cold snare as the tool for all polyps uh, up to nine millimeter in size. So no more forceps, no more hot snare up to nine millimeter, just cold snare for up to nine millimeter polyps. So if you use a cold snare, you should probably use a dedicated cold snare. This one study compared a dedicated cold snare on the left lower side to a standard uh, snare. The dedicated cold snares have typically a stiffer wire and may engage the healthy margin or the polyp a little better. Uh, here in that study, the incomplete resection rate was doubled with a standard snare, 20% with the dedicated cold snare, only 10%, which is, seems still pretty high to me. If you start doing this tomorrow or on Monday when you go home and do colonoscopies, you might find that you have, particularly if you have like an eight millimeter polyp or so, those tissue protrusions. Uh, this is not neoplasia or adenoma. Don't start trying to remove it or pull it off. This is just some fiber tissue from the submucosa and that study from Australia, 18% that occurred in 18% of the, of the polyps that were removed and none, there was in no case any neoplasia. So going back <coughs> to the beginning and the take home points, number one, do not use a forceps as a general rule. However, if it's difficult to get to a polyp just because of position in a left upper field or so, um, just you, you can use a forceps, but only for very small polyps. Number two, use a dedicated cold snare for all polyps up to 10 millimeters in size. Uh, the upper limit is expanding and hopefully new studies will come out soon. Number three, try to take a healthy margin uh, with a gentle push and close technique. Don't lift it off like with a hot snare technique. That's the difference. Cold snare technique, keep the gentle pressure on the wall while closing it. Hot snare, you have to lift it away. Now add two more points. Number one, use a hot snare for larger polyps, still 10 millimeter or larger, and make sure you examine the resection margin after resection to assure completeness of resection. Thank you.